Hello and welcome back to the Daily Mail. Today we will be reviewing some facts about the currently missing former President George W. Bush. He was believed to have been abducted from his home at It is I, the Riddler, played by Paul Dano. Good morning, my little pog champs. It is the Riddler here. Um, it seems to me that I've ran into George W. Bush. I have kidnapped him. Um, to anyone who is seeking to free him, uh, my the only thing I want is just 500 Robux by tomorrow. Uh, anyway, like and subscribe. Um, we seem to be experiencing interruptions amidst the broadcast. We apologize for the delay. Now, back on- And remember, on my uh, 500 sub, I'll kill the mayor. Okay, I believe there shouldn't be any more interruptions from this point forward. The 43rd President George W. Bush was born July 6, 1946 in New Haven, Connecticut. He attended Harvard Business School and has a wife, Laura Welch, and two daughters, Barbara and Jenna Bush. He was in the right-wing Republican Party, and he was in office from 2001 to 2009 with Dick Cheney as his vice president, as far as a few jobs before running for office. In 1977, Bush established a small oil rig originally named Arbusto Energy. In April 1989, Bush arranged to buy controlling interest in the Texas Rangers baseball franchise for $89 million and invested $500,000 to start. He also considered attempting to become the commissioner of baseball in the early 90s. In the 1978 elections, Bush ran for the House of Representatives, but lost by only around 4% of the votes. Ten years later in 1988, he assisted his father's campaign. In May 1968, Bush was commissioned into the Texas Air National Guard. He was assigned to Houston, Texas after training for two years in active service duty. During 1972 and 1973, he drilled with the 187th Fighter Wing of the Alabama Air National Guard. He later moved to Montgomery, Alabama to work on the Senate campaign of Winton M. Blunt, which was unsuccessful. He was suspended from flying in 1973 after being unable to take a physical exam and was discharged two years later from the Air Force Reserve. During his tenure as governor of Texas, 152 people were executed in that state, maintaining its record as the leading state in executions. Although Bush's support of the death penalty is known, controversy broke in 1999 when journalist Tucker Carlson revealed that the governor had mocked the plight of Colafay Tucker in an interview. Bush signed the Amber Alert legislation into law on 30 April, 2003, which was developed to quickly alert the general public about child abductions using various media sources. Newly convicted sex offenders will also face longer mandatory incarceration periods. Bush began his second term with an emphasis on improving strained relations with European nations. He appointed longtime advisor Karen Hughes to oversee a global public relations campaign. Bush lauded the pro-democracy struggles in Georgia and Ukraine. In March 2006, Bush reversed decades of US policy when he visited India in a trip focused particularly on areas of nuclear energy, counter-terrorism cooperation, and discussions that would eventually lead to the India-United States Civil Nuclear Agreement. This was in stark contrast to the stands taken by his predecessor, Bill Clinton, whose approach and response to endure after the 1998 nuclear tests has been characterized as sanctions and hectoring. Bush signed the Strategic Offensive Reductions Treaty with Russia. He withdrew US support for several international agreements, including the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty ABM, with Russia. For extra information, Bush was president during 9-11. He also started painting after his presidency. 
Bush's legacy continues to develop today as supporters credit his counter-terrorism policies with preventing another major terrorist attack from occurring in the US after the 11th of September attacks and also praise individual policies such as the Medicare prescription drug benefit and the AIDS relief program known as PEPFAR. Critics often point to his handling of the Iraq war, specifically the failure to find weapons of mass destruction, as well as his handling of tax policy, Hurricane Katrina, climate change and the 2008 financial crisis, as proof that Bush was unfit to be president. Several historians and commentators hold that Bush was one of the most consequential presidents in American history. Princeton University scholar Julian Zelizer described Bush's presidency as a transformative one, and said that some people hate him, some people love him, but I do think he'll have a much more substantive perception as time goes on. Consider this the end of our side story by the Daily Mail for today. Thank you for your time listening. Enjoy our next entry at the Daily Mail.